Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the first ever video Mindless War podcast. I am your host, Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. We are doing the first ever video podcast, episode 30, and I'm very excited uh, because we have a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. We do. We got a, um, a lot to talk about. A new set. It's in the garage, literally right next to the studio. This is the, fun. This is the best the light you can get. The best the light can get. Yeah, best the, it's the best we can do with lighting. The lighting in the in the garage is down right now, so it would have been a lot better. But we have like what four or five lights. Yeah, we got like five lights. Five lights on the set. Um, but that's show business for you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we got a little fun stuff on our on our set. We got a couple Stranger Things Funkos. Definitely. Uh, Negan's bat from, of course, Walking Dead. Lucille. Rick's gun. It's not really Rick's gun. I just it was a magnum that I had uh, of a BB gun, and I was like Rick's gun. Yeah. Uh, Justice League of America Exorcist variant cover. Of course. Got to have that uh, Exorcist two it Funko pops. Him as Pennywise and him as the uh, spider with the spider legs. Yeah. Of course, we got the Frankenstein comic, the Staten Island experiment. Uh, the first purge pamphlet that I got at Halloween Horror Nights. Shout out to Halloween Horror Nights. Shout out to Horror Nights if you guys are watching. Thank you for watching, being real ones. Um, <laughs> we got a Stranger Things poster and a glass poster, and then this eerie kind of horror lamp that you'd probably see in a horror movie. Probably like 1970s like hotel. 1970s hotel. So today we're talking uh, a couple things. But first and foremost, before we get on with the 30th episode of the podcast, uh, 30 episodes, wow. 30 episodes. Another milestone hit. I remember when I was hitting 20 and 10. We're at 30. I remember the first one. I remember the first one. The first one was good. I wasn't even on it. You weren't on it. It was George, and then it was Isaiah's. Or no, it was Jeremiah's. I'm sorry. And then it was you. It was me. And it's been us ever since, huh? It's been the best. It's been the best. But uh, before we get started, I want to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Shudder. Uh, go ahead and sign up for Shutter with using promo code MINDLESS and you get a 14 day free trial. 14 days. 14 days for the exclusive horror. Um, Streaming platform, much like Netflix, but nothing but horror, uh, A-list, B-list, all those kind of movies. C-list? I don't know if there is a C-list. I know. All the they letters. Probably have it. They probably have it. So uh, we have a lot to talk about, Sammy. All right, what do you want to do first? What did we What did we see recently? Ah, uh, what did we see recently? We saw The Prodigy. The Prodigy, man. The Prodigy was... Man, was it something, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I definitely was something. <laughs> Something is a good word for that because I had no idea what I was walking into. Um, before we, so today on this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the Prodigy. Um, we did see that a couple weeks ago. Um, it's just we've been kind of busy the last like week or two doing other personal stuff. But um, we're going to talk about the Prodigy. We're going to talk about our thoughts about the Child's Play trailer that we, the first one that we got, and we're going to talk a little bit about a new Universal Monsters game, the board game that's out. Oh yes, board games. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started with, of course, that monster board game. Um, uh, we're going to start there, okay? We'll start there. Just get the news out of the way a little bit. Um, so yeah, Universal Monsters, an officially licensed Universal Monsters movie, or not movie, I'm sorry, board game. Board game is correct. Is uh, coming out uh, called, what was it called again? Do you remember? I don't remember. What it was I have called. the pen and paper over here. Let me go get it real quick. All right. But, uh, Stay tuned momentarily as we take yeah. a break. All right, the, this break was sponsored by the. Uh, I'm sorry about that, guys. We weren't a little prepared. We we're getting the set set up and everything. The game is called uh, Horrified. 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 So basically, the concept of the game was um, it's supposed to be the Universal Monsters, and you're supposed to be like the Monster Squad. Now, if you, I know you've never seen the Monster Squad. I've no. seen it's a it's a kind of cult classic movie that came out I think in the 80s. But it's about a group of kids who uh, discover all the monsters and stuff, and the monsters are going after them and stuff like that. Sounds creepy. Yeah, yeah, but it's actually a fun kind of movie. You know, I mean, it was I think it was rated R, but it was almost like a family movie in a way, or maybe PG-13. I don't remember. Yeah, probably PG. I would imagine PG-13. Yeah, 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 and it was a really good cult classic. We'll watch it one of these days. It's a good movie, but 
I dare leave the concept of the board game is you're going to be like the monster squad and all these monsters are going to be chasing after you and stuff like that, so you're going to make decisions to make it out alive. Yeah, that sounds like something that we're going to probably have to get and play. And play it on a live stream. That'd be pretty fun, huh? Yeah, definitely. We'd have to get probably like, it's probably going to take like four people. And yeah, we could get a couple people on there. That'd be pretty fun. Pretty fun. I'm down with that. But that, that just sounded kind of interesting to me because uh, you don't really see Universal Monsters board games these days, you know? No, as a fan of board games, you know, one of my side loves, um, it's definitely kind of fun because I get to combine something I enjoy now doing, podcasting about horror yeah. and playing board games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the board games I've played is Ghostbusters, and that was really fun because, like, you know, you're fighting the little, like, the ghosts and the trying ghost, to catch yeah. them and things like that. Yeah, There's yeah, little yeah. missions along the way. It's pretty fun. So, I mean, I, I think that's just something we're going to have to pick up eventually then. Definitely. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, uh, something that kind of disappointed me was the Child's Play trailer. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Sammy was right next to me when we watched The Prodigy, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah. And that was the, if you saw The Prodigy opening night, you got the Child's Play trailer first before Definitely. they released it on the internet. I think, was it Friday morning or something they like that? They probably did release it Friday. So, it was Friday morning, they released it on the internet, and uh, I looked at Sammy after that trailer, and I was like, this is garbage. And you said, where is he? Where is he? Yeah, they didn't really show, I mean, they showed him, but they didn't show him. Yeah, we didn't get him. We didn't see his face, we didn't see what he looked like, we didn't see... Um, who's voicing him? Nothing. But uh, I mean, I guess if you've been following the promotional stuff on Instagram and stuff, you kind of saw what his face looks like. Sure thing. And uh, I mean, I guess you can kind of say we've seen it, but at the same time, it's just like I want to see it in the trailer. I was excited just to see what's her name from uh, Parks and Rec. Oh, Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. Yeah, she's gonna be playing the mom of yeah. the son who bought the. I mean, it's 2019. Who's still buying good guy dolls for their kids? This no. generation's freaking. <laughs> Screwed with Fortnite and stuff like hey, that. Hey, don't you talk about Fortnite? I'm just saying, like that's that's what that's what people have been talking. That's what you know. That's what it is as of late. Maybe they want to you know preserve his childhood, preserve his childhood, and give him a get a away toy. The, get away from the Fortnite, huh? Yeah. But nonetheless, I mean the trailer. I mean, I mean we do see kind of like an advertisement for. They're not calling them good guys no more. They're calling them buddy dolls. Buddy dolls. Buddy dolls. And we saw kind of like a trailer for that advertising the product and stuff. And then we saw what did we see after that? It was like. Just kind of like Aubrey Plaza giving her son the the doll. Yeah. That it was scanning him and stuff like that. It doesn't look like it's going to be a possession as in the previous movies so far. It looks like it's going to be an artificial intelligence that kind of comes to life. Which would be even more creepy in today's environment. Yeah, I mean, and that kind of gets me a little scared for the future, especially for robots. If I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of robot stuff has been coming on the TV a lot lately, and it's kind of scaring me for the future. Alexa's listening. I'll tell you that. Dude, freaking Skynet, dude. It's going to go live. We're all screwed. I'm telling you. Siri's listening, too. But nonetheless, we see, uh, of course, Chucky going on his carnage rampage with Aubrey Plaza, the kid, a couple other victims and stuff like that. And... um. At the very end, we see the cop pull up, and Chucky's just kind of standing right there and stuff. But we don't see his face. Um, what's the song that they played um, throughout the trailer? Do you remember? I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen I it. I am trying to remember the song, but it was an iconic song. Um, and I remember I kept... I actually went on Spotify and added it to my playlist after. Cause That's hilarious. But, uh, it, it, you know, it's one of those kind of like, you, you know, buddy kind of songs and stuff like that. Which is... I thought it was pretty... I mean, it was a good fit for the trailer, but... I'm sure it was. I don't remember. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, it was one of those, of course... I don't know. I, I just... Right now, it doesn't got my attention, but I'm pretty sure if they release trailers later on showing who he is and who's voicing them, it might catch my attention. Definitely. I, I, I saw actually a funny tweet the other day after that. Um, the, who, the lady who plays the Bride of Chucky had the puppet and her and kind of like made fun of the trailer i think oh that's that's hilarious are you talking about um what's her name i forget her name um anyway yeah as of right now i'm not looking forward to seeing it but we'll see what happens you're probably gonna watch it i'm probably gonna watch it no matter what but it's it's like it's gonna be one of those things where like it's not gonna be the original i mean it's really hard to beat the original yeah i mean the original is so iconic and no it's something like that. And they made so many of them. Yeah, it started getting really shitty after Child's Play three, and even that one was kind of shitty. They made a. They didn't. They, on a side note, didn't they just make a new one? Like so, this new franchise. It was uh, Chris Chucky and Cole Chucky. I heard they're actually really good, but um, it went back to its roots. Yeah. I mean, they they had the original guy come back and and voice Chucky, and it's supposed to take place with the Charlie storyline again. Um, the little boy from the first movie was oh, okay. all grown up and stuff. He was like in an asylum, wasn't he? It's, yeah, it's about a girl now. It follows a girl. She went, goes insane or something like that. Yeah. And, but uh, nonetheless, we'll see what happens. 
We shall see. So let's talk about The Prodigy. The Prodigy. So before we go any further, spoilers to anyone who hasn't seen The Prodigy yet. We're going to go full blown spoilers. Talk about the movie. Talk about our favorite moments. Talk about moments where we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot, lot of those. There's a lot of those. Um, but let's talk about The Prodigy, man. I mean, l- let's talk about overall, though, what do you think of the movie? Oh, you know what? I'm going to go, like, let's see. What do you want me to do? Out of five or out of ten stars? Let's do out of ten. I'll probably give it, like, a 7.5. 7.5? Yeah. It was good. It was captivating. Yeah. Um, there was things, there was moments that were a little slow. Um, and there was other moments that I was just on the edge of my seat or, like, my face was in my shirt because I was yeah. like, this is so much. Yeah, yeah, I remember looking over and kind of seeing you do that a couple times. Yeah. And I remember calling you a puss for doing that, too. You probably did. I probably did. Um, nonetheless, though, we're going to talk a little bit about the characters. What, about you? You, what, about, what are you giving what it? I give, I give it about an 8 out of 10. I mean, that was a really good horror movie. Um, I went into that movie kind of blind. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, man, I thought it was good. Um, I liked it a lot. So... Let's let's talk about what we liked about it though. What did you what did you what kind of into what like really made you go wow this is a really good movie? Well, you know I think what really made it really good um, is a lot of people are saying on the internet just based on the reviews and things is uh, the actor who plays the child Miles that's his name correct yeah um, is that at moments he wasn't good and I agree there was moments where he was obviously you can see that he was young. But at other times, I was just like, this kid is, like, insane. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you guys don't know who Miles is, this guy played, this little kid played Georgie, of course, in the It remake. Uh, Definitely. Chapter 1. Um, and I first saw him in that, and he was really good in that. Definitely. I, I agree. He was really good in that. And, uh, I mean, even though he had a short part, I mean, he dies right in the beginning. For those of you who have seen It, spoilers. So you <laughs> have, I don't know how you have not seen it by now. but uh, Yeah, definitely. That was, like, from 2017, I think, yeah. Even my scary butt watched that before. I was even on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, you know, he, I think really though, as an actor, this kid really stepped it up in this movie. Oh yeah, definitely because obviously, like you said, in it, he's only playing like he's ten, in there like, the, the ten minutes of the movie. First, like he's in there for the first ten minutes, and then he's in there th- a little bit throughout, kind of yeah. as Pennywise taunting the kids and stuff. Yeah, but, but then in this one, he's in it more than half the time. Yeah, he's like he's the whole movie, dude. Definitely. Um, so the prodigy basically is a story about a kid who is born the same night a uh, serial killer is uh, killed. And uh, it, it's a story about reincarnation. Now, if you guys don't know a little bit about reincarnation, it's an uh, it's this, um, and they're not tall tales, they're not fairy tales. It's actually there's been cases where this has actually happened. They've actually showed one legit case that they in the movie of the kid who uh, you know used to run the bakery and stuff. Remember that scene where uh, the mom Sarah she's watching it on the computer. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was like it was like an ABC like twenty twenty. Yeah, special that was an actual case that happened. So there's actual cases of reincarnation where. Uh, when someone dies around the same time someone is born, um, they get reincarnated into their body and they don't leave their body until they fulfill what they wanted to fulfill in life. Definitely. Um, and that's what this movie's about. This movie's about uh, this kid Miles is born, I think, at like four in the morning. Yeah. And uh, the serial killer, his name was Edward Scar- Scarka. I don't remember his last name. Uh, yeah. Let's call him, we'll call him Edward. We'll call him Edward. Mr. Edward. Mr. Hungarian boy. Mr. Hungarian. He's a Hungarian guy. Uh, he's a serial killer who kills uh, women exclusively, and he's got a thing for hands. Yeah. Which is really creepy, because like, in the beginning of the movie, I thought it was in the wrong movie. Like I was telling Tony, I was like, what the hell? Like, What are we watching? I thought we were watching a scary movie about a kid, not a scary movie like about, about a like, serial killer and stuff. <laughs> well, I thought it was a monster at first because yeah. like, the way like, like like the way that they showed like the little shack, yeah, yeah, I and get then you. like the lady running away with like a hand missing. I was like, what the heck? Like, what are we gonna? I thought this was about like a, a kid, no doubt, killer. yeah, not uh, a not a monster. <laughs> so uh, we see this girl in the beginning. Her name's Margaret. She lost a. Uh, her hand to the serial killer but she ends up getting away in the beginning and that's kind of a major plot point in this movie because that is who he's after that's why he gets reincarnated to finish what he started yeah and you don't really find that out um and like you you start piecing it together slowly but surely yeah but at first you're like okay is a kid possessed is a kid possessed and then you're like no there's something more wrong with it's he like multi-personality disorder yeah split personalities no nope, there's something a little bit more and then you find out well you do find out in the beginning and i called it immediately in the beginning i'm like oh it's reincarnation okay i yeah. see it the guy went into the kid's body and that's why as he was growing up he had a high iq he was smart um, even as a baby, he said his first words like very early on. He started walking very early on than a normal baby. Yeah, he was super smart. Yeah, and yeah. he was with smarts for like some really crazy. Oh yeah, stuff. dude, he was like a genius, dude. Like it was like kind of insane of how it was. But I, he he made me not want to have kids. For, like, yeah, kids. but then I was like, nah, I want kids. But like nonetheless, um, 
So the, the, the kind of main three people we see throughout this movie are Sarah, Miles, and John. John, of course, is the dad. Um, Sarah's the mom. Miles, of course, the son. You start seeing this kid growing up, and he's very he's like a genius. And it's yeah. it's, it's like like you said, it's it's unbelievable how much of a genius he was. And um, we start seeing him kind of uh, he starts acting a little weird. Yeah, especially like his his relationship with other people and people that are not his mom, including his dad. It's just weird. Yeah, yeah, he starts acting weird, and it it, it, it affects uh, it affects him at school. It affects him. Like at home with babysitters, one of them. <laughs> I already know what this is oh, about. God, I don't even want to talk about it. That's how cringy it was. But one of the cringiest and hardest to watch scenes in this movie um, is when uh, Miles is at home with his babysitter. The, the mom and the dad went out for like a date night or something. Something they haven't done in a while. Yeah, they hadn't gone on a date night in a while. Yeah, so they're out on a date night and they're doing it. And so My, uh, Miles is at home with the babysitter. Her name is Zoe, by the way. And. Uh, He's at home with the babysitter, and they're playing a game of hide and seek. Well, at first, like no, you already, no, she's like, "Let's go to bed," and he's like, "What about one more game?" Yeah, and it's just like you already see, you already seen this kid early on. You knew this kid had problems. Yeah, and he's very possessive over women, which is really like was really creepy. Yeah, yeah. So he, early on, we already know this kid had problems, um, but nonetheless, it starts getting more weird when uh, she closes her eyes. He doesn't go hide, and he's just kind of standing in front of her face and looks at her. By the way, in this movie, he has two different color eyes. That's going to be a different... Uh, if you guys don't know what this title means by now of the podcast, it's because he has two different color eyes, which is hazel and blue. <laughs> blue or hazel? We're going to talk about that later on in the in the video, but we'll get to it. But nonetheless, he starts... He plays hide-and-seek with her, and the second time that she closes her eyes, he's actually hidden. Well, then he kind of sets up the basement as a trap. I'll let you explain the rest because I can't do it. Yeah, no, definitely. It, it is creepy, um, which is like, I don't understand why he didn't hide at first. Yeah, yeah. But like she counts and you're like, oh, damn, like what's going to happen? Like, yeah. Like you're ready for the jump scare like very much. Yeah. And then like she starts going down the stairs and you're like. Then you already know what's going to happen. You know, it was, I, I, my, my guess was a nail. Yeah. But then you see the glass and you're like. It's the glass pushes your foot. And it's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. You see it. Uh, she falls down the stairs. You feel it in your soul? I felt it. I really did. I felt it, and it was horrible, and I could not do it. It was very cringy. I just couldn't do it. I, I was in the theater, like, kind of like, oh, that's horrible. Yeah, that's how um, I was, too. Like, my face was, like, in my shirt, like. <sighs> and that's the kind of stuff that we get introduced to. I mean, that's where we start seeing him go more psychotic and stuff, yeah. becoming that killer. Um so then they take him to therapy because he's been causing too much trouble in school. He actually, like, beat the shit out of some kid almost to death <laughs> with a hammer or something. Yeah, right? because once again, he's possessive over women, and yeah. he wanted to that girl to be his lab partner. And yeah, and that, the he was like, no. No, I already got her. Yeah, so he starts beat the hell out of him. Beat the hell out of him. Which gets him kicked out of genius school. Yeah, so then they actually end up taking him to a therapist, which she thinks that there's something more wrong than... Than what they eventually yeah, came what for. Yeah, what meets the eye. What meets the eye. So then we get introduced to Dr. Elaine uh, Strasser and uh, Mr. Arthur. He's a therapist. They're both therapists. They're trying to help out. Um, well, I don't know if he's a therapist. He's something else. He is a hypnotist, I think. Oh, yeah. He's a, yeah, he does hypnotism. Yeah, he does hypnotism to try to introduce people. So then he introduces, uh, he's, he does a session with him. And that was probably one of the... Well, no, before that, before he does the, the session with him, which is really creepy, he kind of tells the mom, like, hey, this is what I think's happening. Yeah, he like, gives I him, don't know what's happening, but, like, I think, like, he may have... Gives him a little synopsis. Yeah, of about, like, she, the whole reincarnation thing. Yeah. And she brings it home, and her husband's like, ah, you stupid. You stupid. So that's the first time. The first time he's like, he just thought, and then uh, the first time... But the second time they go to that therapy session, dude. Woo! You really get to see so how smart he is. We bring out Edward. Um, he calls upon Edward to uh, essentially just to talk to him. But it ends up being more than that. Oh, yeah. He, Wait, I think we forgot one of the more creepy scenes. We can go back to it. What is that one? The one when they're in the bed after the, the dad leaves, I think. Or did that happen after? That had happened one. after. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the dad gets in the car accident, and that's what causes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no. So we end up seeing. Oh wait, no, that might that might have been before actually. Yeah, because remember the dad snaps at him. Yeah, and then he's like, "Oh, he needs some space. He needs some space." So he goes to his brother's house, and yeah. that's another creepy scene. Actually, yeah, it's a good thing that we went back to. So then, uh, actually, what happens is the dad snaps at him for doing all this stuff at school. Um, and that's when I think he brings up the fact that, you know, your dad treated you like shit. That's why you're treating me like shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, have you uh, have you been saying anything about my dad? And he was, she was like, 
no, I don't talk to him about your dad. Yeah. And then they go look in the room and they yeah, turn yeah. the picture around and they're like, damn, he's been spying he's on been us. He's been spying on us. So that was pretty weird. On top of that, um, there's another creepy scene where, uh, of course, the kid comes in and sleeps with the mom at night. Uh, yeah, he's like, can I, can I sleep with you? Yeah, and then he does the infamous line of, uh, do you, mom, do you love me no matter what and all that. And she's like barely like, yeah. 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 But there was another creepy scene before that. Remember her nightmare scene? When she walks in the hallway and then he's standing at the end of the hallway and he comes running towards her and then it's the dude. Oh yeah, that was really. So that was a creepy scene. There's a scene where the the mom's having a nightmare and she gets up in the middle of the night and the the son Miles is sitting at the end of the hallway. It's a dark hallway, and um, Miles is just standing there. She asks him like, "Mom, are you okay?" And then Miles runs, but then it goes into like a dark spot, and then out comes Edward the serial killer and kind of chokes her. I mean, it was a pretty good jump scare. I think it was one of the best since, since a while. Yeah, it was a really good jump scare. Um, I, I think she says, Miles, are you okay? And then he just runs at her. Which yeah, and really then crazy. it just turns into Edward, an yeah. older man. But well, then, also thought was cool is at times like you would just see Edward's face on his face. Yeah, yeah. On Miles' face, I mean. What about that one creepy scene where he turns around and it's like his face? That was just kind of weird, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really creepy. That was creepy too. But um, So then we see, of course... Uh, we see them at, the, of course, the second therapy session. The therapist is trying to get through to Edward to talk to him to see why he's in the body, what he wants to do. Definitely. He doesn't know his name, so he's trying to figure out his name as well. So then he's trying to talk to Miles and Edward, Edward at the same time, saying, like, try to give me his name so I can find out who this guy is, so we can find out what he wants to do and yeah, get him he, out. I thought it was really cool that he starts speaking to him in Hungarian, and that's, like, really what activated him. Activated him. He goes, do you speak Hungarian and stuff like that? But one of the – I'd say one of the, the most evilest parts in this movie, but it was also kind of a funny part, is when he goes, now I'm a little kid. No one's going to believe you, but I took – I can just say I took some of your sleeping medicine. You passed out. You put your cock in my mouth, and yeah, that was he was just so uh, he was, yeah. So like he was just there, right? Yeah, he was there, and it was just kind of one of those it's kind of disgusting moments, you know, where he's like getting into detail of what he's gonna do if he gets caught or something like that. Yeah, like he's like. Like I can, I'll, I, I can put your pubic hair in my teeth. Like yeah, he goes. I'll like, take the I, sleeping pills so they'll find the drugs in my system. And it, it was just, it got yeah. all yeah. real creepy. Real well, quick. he already did take the pills. Remember? Yeah, he, he did. They're already in my system. Yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, he got really detailed about it. He goes, so we're gonna walk out of here. You're gonna say he's okay, and that's it. Yeah. But that's when, of course, he calls the mom later on that night. Says he's not okay. No, because he finds the etching in the seat of who it was. Yeah. Because it was Miles who etched out Edward. Yeah. And he looked up Edward, and he found out he was a serial killer, kills women, all that stuff. So then we find out more about who this killer is, what he's done. Yeah. And that causes the mom to do some research on it too. Definitely. Which eventually we see that she finds out about Edward and she finds out that it's possessing Miles, which then at w at which point they convince uh she convinces John the dad about what's going on and they convince each other to put him out in a mental institution. Yeah. Which doesn't work out for him well. No, that does not look well for a John. That's the dad's name, right? Yeah, that's John. Yeah, he, um, uh, he takes him out of school. Takes him up from school, tells him, let's go. He refuses to go. He was hilarious does. that scene. He yeah, like, no. he's like, nah, we're not doing that, dude. So he refuses to go, and uh, eventually he gets him in the car and stuff like that, and that's when he brings up the dad stuff and everything. And um, Miles, uh, you know, he's... He's trying to talk to him and stuff like that, but Miles pulls out a knife on him and stabs him in the in the side, right? Yeah, he does something like that. He stabs him or something on the side, and which that causes, him, causes to him to crash and puts him in a very critical condition yeah. in the hospital. Uh, Miles walks out with like a couple scratches. Yeah. Well, also, I think we also forgot another key uh, key part of this movie. Um, is the dog. The dog, yeah. So the, another another demented part that we see Miles more, and that what kind of causes the mom to kind of believe the psychiatrists and stuff more was the fact that they found the dog dead in the basement just stuffed in one of the drawers yeah and like even like that car ride between john and miles is very creepy yeah like when they're looking for the dog and he's oh yeah just like i forgot what he does i think that's when he first brings up his dad no he brings i thought he brought up he brought up his dad way before that i think no i think it was that because when he goes back he goes did you tell him anything about my dad oh is that it yeah i think it was oh maybe then but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, like, one of those kind of rides where it's just, like, you feel uncomfortable. Every time Miles is on the screen, basically, it becomes very it uncomfortable. Feels really uncomfortable. So then eventually the mom figures out the only way to stop this reincarnation is to give Edward what he wants, which is essentially to kill um, Margaret, the girl with the one hand who got away. 
Yeah, cool. She actually wrote a book. She wrote a book about her experience, and that's what I think drove him more. I mean, we end up finding out her his plans uh, before this happens in his room, where we found a bunch of newspaper articles about uh, all the victims he killed, about Margaret, about the book she he read yeah. the book that she wrote yeah. and stuff. Because she has um, it, he has it in like hidden in his closet, right? Yeah, like one of the wood things he like popped back in, and he has it hidden and stuff like that, which was pretty interesting in my opinion. Yeah, um, he was he was this kid knew what he was doing very much. Given that, but um. So then we see that happen, and then um, they end up going down to Margaret's house. Now, before this, uh, Sarah, the mom, buys a gun from a pawn shop. Yeah. Um, and then she tells, of course, Miles to take the sleeping pills because they make him sleep because he didn't want him to find out where they were going. And she's gangster and like, I'm going to watch you swallow those. Yeah, you better swallow those, you little shit. And then, uh, <laughs> and I was talking to Sam about the whole movie, and I kept telling him, like, I would just punch this kid. I would kill this kid already. Yeah, he's already, he would have been done. He would have been done, dude. It would have been over. But I think it's because you also have this this dynamic, I think, between a, a Mel's love for their son and their mother's love for their son. Yeah. Just as an overarching theme. And that's why I think this movie worked out really well, because, I mean, you saw the dad. He was all for this kid's insane. Let's get him out of here. Yeah, and, and, and he was doing everything in his power. I think because obviously because you find out his relationship with his dad was rocky. Yeah. And he's like, I want to love this kid and be a good dad. But like this kid, like he's, he's got he some deserves problems. It. Yeah. And of course you see the mom. She's also, she's, you see her character. She's trying to do everything she can to protect her son. And, everything. In the end, it's just like she couldn't. Yeah. But uh, we get to, of course we get to Margaret's house and she starts talking to Margaret. She says she's having problems with her son. And that's where we get introduced to Margaret again since the beginning of the film. Yeah, that's like the second time we get to see her, basically. Yeah, so she's in her house. She's very kind of like, she's very paranoid. She won't let anyone in, really. She's like very protective and stuff over her. Which makes sense. Because she's still scared and, yeah, she's still very startled about her situation and stuff like that. But then we see, uh, of course, she's talking to her. Then she ends up going to the bathroom, pulling out the gun. Uh, and then she starts pulling out the gun on Margaret. Um, and then she's like, I can't do this. She's like, I can't do this. But it's then, only because she finds out she has a son. Yeah. So then, um, that's when we get the funny scene, which is the title of this video, Hazor Blue, um, where we see Miles, he just kind of snuck into the door, yeah, and then he, he kind of yells at Margaret, like, hey, and he goes, Hazel or Blue, Hazel <laughs> or Blue, and he keeps telling her, and she keeps, look, she looks at him, she goes, that's what he told me on our first date, so then we see that kind of happen, and, uh, that's when Margaret realized it was, of course, uh, Edward, and, um, then Miles just kind of takes off running. You think that that cured the uh, reincarnation. Oh, definitely. That's when you're like, oh, yeah, he's good. He's, he's good. good. Yeah, because he kind of just takes off. pretty crazy, too. Yeah, he stabs her to death, dude. And he, he cuts her. like Cuts that. her, yeah. Um, but then he ends up kind of just running off into the cornfield. And you're just like, well, maybe he's okay now. Maybe he's just scared, you know, what he saw. Yeah. But then we catch up with Miles in the cornfield, and Sarah is going up to Miles, where then they have a confrontation for the last time, where uh, Sarah goes, well, are you okay? Is everything all right? And that's when Edward turns around and goes, your son's been gone since that night of when I told you, Mommy, do you still love me and all that? That was the last time you actually spoke to your son. Which is crazy. And then that tells you, like, what reincarnation can do to people, you know? like it's Well, insane. I think it's, it's very clear with uh, the the hypnotist, reincarnation guy whose name I his remember. name was Arthur Arthur yes Arthur it was very much like if you don't get this done soon it's gonna be permanent it's, it's soul versus soul at that point. yeah the dominant soul is gonna take over and but uh, we end up seeing that she puts her son at gunpoint and at that point you hear a gunshot go off and you she think, monologued too long that's why yeah she monologued too long saying that giving my son back and all that and everything um, she went up she put her on gunpoint you hear a gunshot miles falls to the floor but then you realize it wasn't the mom who shot Miles. It was a farmer who shot the mom trying to shoot Miles. And then Mr. Deceptive comes back. Yep. And then the kid, of course, he acts like a kid as Miles. Ends up running to the farmer. The farmer saves his life. The mom ends up dying. The mom and dad, they kind of set it up so if they want to do something with the dad. and, and if they Yeah, definitely. That's what sequel, they set it up for. If they wanted to do a sequel, they can do something with the dad. Um, but then the kid, of course, goes to a foster family. And... Um, it was kind of a full circle because at the end of the kid, he gets out of the car and she goes, my name's so-and-so, uh, welcome to the family and stuff like that. And she says, you want to go see your room? He looks at her hands and then kind of 
comes back to, oh, he's still Edward. He's got that hand problem. and Definitely still does. So then he goes up into his room and checks it out a little bit. And then he looks into the mirror. And it, I think it's probably one of the most scary shots of the movie because he looks into the mirror. And when he looks into the mirror, he sees Edward. Yeah, he doesn't see himself any longer. He doesn't see the little boy. He sees Edward. And I thought that was, all, honestly, it was a really cool shot. But it was also one of the scariest shots of the movie because that shows you that dominant soul took over. And Miles yeah. is just done well i think i think what was creepier than ba- basically seeing edward was miles's smile yeah right when he gets out of the car right like, when he gets out of the car it's comfortable it's it's horrible but uh that is the prodigy for y'all there was no post credits into that so no no need to stay after the credits even though tony was like i search for her. every movie i go to for a post credit scene because marvel has me fucked up that there's gonna be a post credit scene there was a post credit scene for happy death day too oh was there there was oh, okay spoiler spoiler so if you're going to go see Happy Death Day 2, stay after the credits. I won't say what it is, but stay after the credits. Happy Death Day to you. To you? To you, yeah. Um, so that is going to do it for the Prodigy. Uh, so yeah, Sammy gave it a 7.5 out of 10. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Um, definitely go check it out. It is still in theaters uh, as of this recording. Definitely. And I'll probably be there a little bit longer. Probably be there for a bit longer. Um, the next one we're going to hopefully do is maybe Happy, happy Death Day. In a couple weeks or so, or probably. I mean, I just have to go watch it. Um, stay tuned for this week, though, because uh, or stay tuned for next week, because we're gonna have an interview with another director from a movie. I won't say what yet. I want to kind of keep it a surprise. Nothing really uh, major, but it's still cool to interview a director. Definitely, it's gonna be super exciting. We're gonna uh, watch his movie sometimes. We're gonna watch, I think, this Friday as Which of this recording. As of this recording, so yeah, been last week. Yeah. So, uh, thank you guys for watching this podcast, and we will see you guys next week. See ya.